It's Laura Keller here from the We Know Lanark County podcast. I'm here with Rod Scribner from the, well, from the Grand Hotel and Bolton House Restaurant and the Evermore event site in Elmont. How are you today, Rod? Doing well, thank you, Laura. Appreciate you having me. You bet. As I mentioned, you are you have your your fingers in a lot of uh, a lot of different pots. So, tell me a little bit about each of those places. We decided to make a, a move to a smaller town, to just out of the Ottawa marketplace with our previous restaurants. And, uh, and just to keep it a little more consolidated, we decided to look at Carleton Place. We always love small towns and uh, we just like the, the dynamic out there. It's a growing town and uh, we, we knew people out there and uh, the opportunity came to buy the Grand Hotel. So we just thought, let's do that because it was a beautiful old building and real estate being my favorite thing. We just loved the idea of taking on that project for the big renovation that we wanted to do. And there was a decent vision to, to turn it into a decent restaurant and a small boutique hotel and mm-hmm. wedding venue, which is really important. We do special events, but really nice high-end boutique weddings. And uh, so that became a labor of love between myself and my, uh, my business partner, Janice Mathers, my ex-wife. She's an interior designer and she also, she is the owner of Evermore Weddings and Events. Right. And I am Bolton House, our secondary restaurant on the water, yeah. is the uh, is the exclusive caterer. So our chefs literally are are when you're eating at Evermore, you're eating high end restaurant food. Yeah, you know, it's, we go in there, we actually create custom menus for their weddings. Nice. Yeah. I I mean I, I live in Carlton Place, so I'm I'm at your your restaurants all the time. <laughs> they're they're our <laughs> top top of the list. What, I mean, you wanted to get out of Ottawa, but what, what sort of drove that? You were just done with the city and... We had a beautiful restaurant on Preston called Salt that was pretty well known. It was, it's a, it was a beautiful, beautiful spot. I, yeah. I will say I really, I miss the decor and such. What I didn't miss was just, it was expensive. It, it, space is terribly expensive. It, it was just to the point where no matter how busy you were, it's, it was difficult to make money. Yeah. And no matter how good the product was um, with, with rents like that. This, the nature of the city is a lot different than, than out just a half an hour away in Carlton Place. Right. In that, you know, you're busy a lot of times Friday, Saturdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. It's a little more fickle. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of choice in those areas and people bounce back and forth. So you're busy two or three days a week and then not you need to have business, you know, lunchtime and dinner time in this industry with profit margins being so, so low in the, yeah. in the restaurant industry, you can't afford to have just depending on the weekends to make your money. And what we found in Carlton place is it's just a wonderful town. The people, everybody knows each other. If you treat people well there, they'll treat you well. They okay. eat out. And extraordinarily, <laughs> I don't even know. It's it, you just people eat out there more than any other town I've ever been in. Maybe it's just me, but we see the same people often and we love it. So it's like a big family, whether it be at Bolton House on the patio outside or in the wintertime doing stuff with our, you know, with our, you know, four and five course tastings. Yeah. And same thing with Chef Jordan over at, uh, at the Grand Hotel when we do special events or if we're yeah. just in the pub working with specials, we see our regulars often. And then a lot of other folks and our regulars are always coming in. We're bringing a lot of business from Ottawa now because yeah. it's a fun day trip. It's not a big drive. It's 20 minutes from Canada and people are coming out, staying in the hotel and, and want to have a little, uh, a little staycation. They go away for a day, have a great meal. They don't have to drive and they just go back to town. It's, it's easier coming this way than it is going downtown now. Oh, it's so true. And so, yeah. And a totally different experience. You know, there's a little boutique shopping and, um, you know, you walk along the river and it's not congested. And It's a beautiful town. There's so much there that I don't even know about yet because I've been busy for three years. <laughs> and, and to be honest, I'm trying to move to Carlton Place. And it's been one of those things where it's a tightly held real estate community as well. The little town is booming. And uh, so it, it bodes well. Um, you know, for, for, for the town and for its restaurants and such. Uh, COVID's been hard on everybody. It's, you know, uh, unfortunately, there's you know, growth was, was tipping along quite nicely. And then, of course, COVID comes along. And um, like a lot of towns, people, have, we've seen restaurants close that we wish we hadn't, you know, seen close. It's unfortunate. It's just, uh, it's happening all over the province. Yeah. How, how did that affect you while we're on the subject? Terribly. (laughs) Um, The Grand Hotel is a wedding venue and a large portion of our volume 
is wedding business. Like yeah. well over a third uh, is wedding business. And then wow. of course, the wedding business feeds the hotel business and uh, the hotel business feeds the restaurant and uh, you know, not to get into a whole business plan thing, sure. but bore your you know, listeners to death. <laughs> the reality of it all is, is that it hurt us. It, literally the reason we're still there, I, I owe it to literally guys like Steve Moody, yes. uh, my partner, and, and, and of course, Jordan, our head chef, uh, you, you know, Melanie Cassidy, and, and all of our servers and staff, every single person, there's, no, there's too many to name. Um, but the reality of it all is, is they put together a couple of, of um, great ideas, like the, uh, like the Feed the Community series that, yes. that just kept our name in front of people and, you know, giving away four course dinners for, you know, three course dinners for four people for $49. It's not a moneymaker. Trust me, you're not making money on that, but it really helped a lot of families. You can't buy three courses for $12 and 50 cents. You no. can't buy models. Well, we, or big we got Easter meal. dinner from, from the grand hotel. That's where right. we got Easter. Actually, I bought a few of them and, and gave them away and they were so well received and we certainly enjoyed it. We're um, still doing them. It's, and, um, and yeah, you're still doing them every, every week, you know, these full meals that you just have to pop in the oven and it's, you know, it's from scratch cooking and it's, and you were doing grocery pick up like people could buy produce from you like it really was product. i know steve was behind that like just such a oh. big uh he's an incredibly yeah. community minded guy he's a you know what he was he's fantastic he's out there doling out free toilet paper in the beginning when it was all kind of angsty That's about <laughs> people having to clean themselves <laughs> on their drapes he was just like well we can't have this you know it's uh it's fantastic. And so as a result, we were able to keep the lights on and keep, you know, a good chunk of our employees employed and, and to basically just, just keep the lights on. Yeah. Uh, we feel bad because we missed, we've missed a whole wedding season, but for venues like us, it's bad for us. Venues like the, the wedding venues and such, the pure wedding venues, they're really struggling because they weren't, yeah. able, they weren't open for delivery. They weren't able to be, they're not restaurants. They're just pure wedding venues. I think it's a travesty that the government hasn't done something just very specific to the wedding slash event yeah. spaces uh, to help them out because, you know, we, we don't think about them until we want them and need them. That's and right. when they all start closing, a lot of young gals and guys and kids out there with weddings and, you know, people, they're going to miss them. And I hope that yeah. the government kind of pays attention to that. Yeah. Yeah. Lots, lots to think about for sure. You've been in the industry 30 years or so. Is that right? Uh, I started when I was 14 and I'm, I'm 96 now. So it's been, I think it's 82 years. You look really good, Rod. <laughs> it's, it's clean living for sure. Clean living. I'm on my second day of not having a drop of alcohol and, and it's why I can't, you can't see my hands. That's why I just, I'm clinging to the elbows of this chair right now because of the shaking. Being a food guy, wine's a big part of that. The hands aren't shaking. Okay? But it's, it's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been in the industry for a long time. Then I got out of it. I started in the industry. And that's the reason I got into the back end of the industry is I, when I got out of the real estate business, which yeah. you understand well, uh, we were doing a lot of investment real estate stuff. And then the market changed with the, the banking, the way banking was done and stuff like that. Yeah. And the writing was on the wall. And I wanted to, I was in an industry that was very specialized in your business, in, in the real estate mm-hmm. game, something my kids would never be able to do. And so I decided to just get back into my, you know, original crush was always the restaurant business. I love the camaraderie. I love how real it is and how community it is. And, and uh, I don't know why, but decided to start opening restaurants. And uh, <laughs> it was a great idea at the time. And now it's become just a habit. So we're doing some stuff and I'm trying to just kind of slow it down now and, right. and consolidate and stay in Carlton Place. And, uh, you know, my kids get to work with me now. It's awesome. And, uh, oh, that's you know, cool. and we've got a great community out there. They, they really, really really just been so welcoming so we're really really thankful this to the town of carlton place that's for sure oh, that's good um in, in that time how have you seen the restaurant industry evolve what's been the what's been the first COVID thing that changed everything i mean it's it's I, i'd like to say it was evolving in a a lot of things have changed in the, in the industry before covid yeah um interestingly enough as costs go up, rents go up, food costs go up, supply costs go up, and labor goes up, restaurant pricing was going down because 
you know, there's a lot of small operators or, or mom and pop shops. I'm a mom and pop shop, yeah. but a lot of small places were coming in there and just pricing food at next to nothing to grab business. And, um, and, and there's a, there's a waterfall effect where, you know, this industry, you the margins are so, so low that it became very, very difficult for restaurants to, uh, you know, if one place is selling a beer for $6 and another place is selling it for $5, then everybody's selling it for $5. Yeah. And all of a sudden it becomes one of those things where the restaurants that aren't six employees, you know, that have actual real rent and 50 or 60 employees, they can't work on those margins. They'll just lose money and be gone. So I saw them, the, the industry I saw was really not following proper economics every other business in the world as the supply chain costs increase price increases yeah. and uh, they weren't able to do that in in certain parts of the world ottawa toronto even and um, we were hoping to see that swing back and it's starting to restaurateurs are starting to say look and 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 the buying public has to understand that you know if a if a hamburger costs 16 dollars, it's because there's you know five or six dollars or seven dollars for the cost on the plate yeah. and uh and you know the remaining eight or nine dollars doesn't go into my pocket there's yeah. so it's the buying public would be horrified if they yeah. no, you know sure. just how their local favorite restaurants how close they run to you know, insolvency and they do this it's a passion play. There's so many people in this industry that work so hard, professional servers and chefs and cooks and, and you know, cleaners and just everybody is, is so, so, you know, heavily invested emotionally in the business that they love it. It's what they do. My job is to make sure that we're charging enough to make sure we can keep the doors open. And I think that's where I've seen a big change in the industry. It was slowly starting to take it, uh, you know, rise back up where pricing was getting to be a little bit better and the buying public was actually getting you know getting with it we're not talking about having 55 dollar caesar salads and nonsense like that we're just talking the extra dollar here and there to keep your margin um and then covid hit and that changed everything i mean just it just became unfair i mean restaurants with patios were blessed to have a patio carlton place is all about patios people will sit in the snow and eat in carlton place That's right here's your poutine it's covered in snow <laughs> enjoy and they're just hardcore patio lovers That's but right. if you don't have a patio covid has hurt them because you know in phase two open patios well you know some of my favorite restaurants in carlton place you know people i really care about have been closed for a long time and are still closed yeah. Simply because they don't have patios. And now well, I, I was downtown Ottawa in the market last week and, and it was, you know, it was painful to see some of my favorite restaurants there closed. And it's the same thing, you know, like, like you say, you're so close to, you're so close to insolvency basically. And, and uh, you know, those are, those are some big, big name restaurants. And um, I think in any industry too, you know, you have people who are really, really good at their job and, and the, the business side of things is, it, you know, it's easy on paper, but it's complicated when you have to sit down and write it out. So it's interesting that you say that. It's funny because you can be, there's some great operators, of course. And yeah. there's some operators that aren't as great. They're less experienced. There are people that are getting into it. They have a dream of opening a restaurant and, you know, they take their retirement savings and they go and they buy a small restaurant because they always thought they could do it and they'd be good yeah. at it. And they realized, oh my God, I should have left my money in the bank at 1%. I'd be making my money. <laughs> It can happen so quickly. Um, and you can still be a great operator and just be just murdered by circumstance, COVID. Uh, you know, they close a street, they close Elgin, or they close bank, and all of a sudden your restaurant, we're going to be closing our bridge. And there's restaurants close to that bridge. I mean, some of our friends are going to feel that in Carlton Place. And that is, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a political animal, but boy, it would be nice to see the government help out some of these restaurants with taxes or leases or yeah. situations because this is no fault of theirs. Their livelihoods, their children are going to suffer because of this. And all they've done is give great service and great food to the community and yeah. they're not getting rich. No. So it's one of those things where there's, I still think there's work to be done, you know, on the provincial level and the local level to help mm -hmm. out uh, 
the restaurant industry per se. Every, I, I can only speak to that because I don't own a flower shop, but man, I love flowers and uh, we appreciate them. And I'm sure they're struggling as well. I, I don't want to seem like I'm just focused yeah. on them. It's just the, the, the business in general. Yeah. But, uh, Bolton. Well, I mean, for, for, a, for a budding entrepreneur, what would be your, your best piece of advice? Because you don't get into the business to, to get rich quick, but what's, what's the best thing you in can my, pass on? In my industry or any industry? It, as, a, as a restaurateur, what would be your best piece of advice? Right now, I would, if, I was, if I was back in the market or if I was in the market for uh, you know, another restaurant, which, and, and by the way, if you ever, ever hear that, you, uh, you just hit me in the head with a hammer and stop me. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I ever think sometimes I'll see something and like, a, like any deal junkie coming from the real estate industry, I'm just like, Oh my God, we can do that. That could be a talk. Yeah. Place. And then I don't have the time or the, I don't want to do it. But if I was, I would say to folks right now, just wait, just wait. There's a lot of stuff going on in the market. You're going to see so many restaurants going into business still. Mm -hmm. um, that there is going to be space available. Commercial tenants are going to be, I hope, begging for, you know, lower cost tenants because of blacks, because they've got dark space. And yeah. I'm not, I'm a commercial landlord. I'm not, I wouldn't wish pain on my, on my peers in that industry, but let's be honest. They've had a good ride. It's been too, it, rents are way too high and t landlords of, of, of restaurants are just making a fortune and the restaurants themselves are just working to pay their landlord. And that's not the way it should be. It wasn't that way 25, 30 years ago. It shouldn't be that way now. I would say to a young restaurateur, wait and something that you would have had to pay six figures to pick up chattels and, and a space you'll probably get for next to nothing uh, because these guys don't want to have people dragging it out and throwing it into some sort of, you know, auction and you'll be able to negotiate a good lease and you'll be able to start your business with good fundamentals, i.e. not be paying every, you know, 40% of your bloody income mm -hmm. to cover your, uh, your basic costs. So I would say be patient right now. We don't know what COVID's going to do. We don't know if it's going to come back a resurgence, kick us back to phase two, phase one. Who the hell knows? Yeah. I would say be very patient if you're in the industry right now. And if you're in the industry right now, just hold tight. My God, do delivery, do whatever you can, uh, you know, to keep yourself solvent. Talk to your landlord, beg, do whatever you have to do. You yeah, know? right. So, so you're not buying any more restaurants. So what, what are the plans for your future? What, what, what's in the next years for you? Uh, you know, my kids are at that age right now where I want to spend more time with them. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're young men right now, but at the end of the day, stay working in this industry here, grow the, these are both new businesses. Bolton house is you know, two and a half years old now. And we can't count this year because it's a the, the whole COVID year is going to be like the year that everything hit pause. This is supposed to be our busiest year. We were really yeah. excited about 2020. Now let's say everybody's just, you know, clinging to whatever they can cling to here. So I want to spend the next year or so building the grand into what I think it should be, which is you know, a great wedding venue. It's a, it's a great spot to do small, customized, small weddings, nothing huge. Not like, not like Evermore. We we're, we're not competing with our sister, you know, project yeah. Evermore or Stonefields uh, folks that do a great job on the outdoor stuff. We want to be a place that where people can have a 40, 50, 60, 80, hundred, 200 person wedding if they want but we're not going to worry about size and we can really customize because we have a great chef in house. Uh -huh. Whereas Bolton, we just want to keep doing what we're doing over there. That patio on that river, let's be honest, there's nothing like it anywhere. No. It's such a beautiful, beautiful vista that uh, we just want to just hope the river doesn't wash us out or something like that. We're just begging for, <laughs> begging for a light spring. <laughs> Fingers crossed on that. Um, yeah. So with Evermore then, that's, a, that's exclusively an event business, right? Evermore is one of the, one of Canada's actually uh, premier wedding and event spaces. They, you know, they won lots of awards. They do it up right. I mean, everything is absolutely first class over there. Right from the food that Nick Dompierre, our, our mm -hmm. head chef, uh, does right on through to Marisol Campo, who's our, our, uh, our, our waiter captain. She works for the prime minister. She's fantastic we've got a great staff over there and they specialize in 
in bigger events. Beautiful, that 46 acre property. It's just gorgeously landscaped. And, you know, everything there is just first, just world class. And yeah. we were, were proud to be associated with those guys. And Janice has done a, a fantastic job with that place. And she's, of course, excited to get back to <laughs> doing, doing I'm weddings. I'm sure. It's, it's, sure. It's, it's, it's the saddest thing in the whole world to see someone having a social, socially distanced 10 person bubble wedding on yeah. an event space that's at 46 acres with 10 people sitting on it. No one can afford to do that. You can't afford to open up your doors to something like that. So we're really looking forward to, to seeing them and all of our peers get back into business because there's a lot of great catering companies and caterer friends of ours that we know that are sitting home going, what am I going to do with my business? Yeah. Like they just can't afford to lose a whole year. Yeah, and, uh, that's what's happening. I, I think we'll see a lot of midweek weddings next year for people who are catching oh, up. <laughs> oh yeah, we're catching up and on a budget. And all the venues, all of us are offering great pricing on midweek. I yeah. mean, that's the that's the hidden gem. Everybody fights for the Saturday. Oh my God, yeah. we want a Saturday wedding. Yeah, you'll pay a premium for a Saturday wedding, sure. but man, oh man, if people, it's a wedding. Everybody can take a Thursday morning off so you can have a yeah. blowout, have a great wedding and yeah. save yourself thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the meantime, because a midweek wedding for us is a beautiful thing, you know? Yeah. So yeah, that would just, be great. It, it's a wedding. So I think everybody can always, sometimes they can't, but if you can book midweek, it's a great thing. Always yeah. save. With your experience in the industry and with the, the two, the three uh, businesses now. What's what's your philosophy like? What what's the what's the driving force behind doing what you do? For for me to get into the business, it was it was just. Oh, I always loved to travel. Um, Janice and I, when we were together, were big travel buffs, and uh, we were always big foodies and enjoy enjoy you know eating different cultures and stuff like that. And restaurants are a big part of our lives. We're traveling here and there. You try to pick up little things and emulate things that, you know, it's a, it's a great form of flattery when you can go out there and take a look at something that so-and-so did in this restaurant or this place. And so when we opened our restaurants, I wanted something that was not crazily overpriced. You know, it had to be reasonably priced because it just, it never sat well with me when you're paying ridiculous money for, I've done it in Las Vegas, gone to a couple of, you know, famous people's restaurants and paid. Uh. You, you always leave there going, my God, this is just, what did I, what the hell did I just do? What did I eat? You know? And why did, why did it cost the same amount as a used Prius? I don't understand. Did I bought a car. Did I just eat dinner? Especially in Carlton place. We want to make sure that we can give people as good as anything you're going to get in Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto service. That's a little more, Relax, because again, we don't want to be doing white glove service in a town like Carlton Place where people are pretty laid back. They know everybody, and that's part of the beauty of it, um, but in a beautiful surrounding. We want the place to look great. It's going to have, you know, I'm a big aesthetic guy. It's, it's important to me that you eat with your eyes as well as, you know, as, as your mouth and stuff like that. So our goal was just to give Carlton Place everything that they possibly could want and deserve at a price that was not, you know, dive bar pricing. Yeah. You know, we don't want to do that because again, we want to make sure that we're there, but not the most expensive thing that, that they're ever going to see as well. And then just build a reputation in the community as we're part of the family. People want to do something with us. They call us, they, they have a special event. They call us if they need us for something, they need a favor. They call us, you know, we're Steve Moody is, it's hard to get the word no out of that guy sometimes. He's a good, good, very community-minded guy. We want to be that. It's a small, small town, and you'll, you, you find that in those restaurants. You look at Ian yeah. Carswell next door over at the Black Tart. He's a fantastic guy, community-minded guy. Yeah. You know, we want that. that it, it's so important now more than ever uh -huh. that restaurants aren't just these little exclusive places where people go to and restaurant tours can act like, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, want, you want to be part of the community. And yeah. That's, well, I, that's, the, the one thing I like about both of the restaurants is that they're a little more elevated than pub food. You're getting really delicious, fresh food, but it's not, you know, inaccessible pricing that we can't hit it up on a Wednesday. It's just one of our favorite things, but Actually, my go-to my go-to meal through all of COVID has been the chicken parm sandwich. That's been I probably get it once a week. It's so delicious. It's, it's huge. I laugh it's about huge. it. It's huge. I can I can it's never huge. finish it. Never finish it. And the regular chicken parm, it's my my kids' favorites. 
these chicken breasts that we're getting in are spectacular. No, they're like this big. When we hammer them out, they're the size of a of of, a, of an album cover from back in the 70s. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, it barely fits in the plate. I'm like, no one can eat that. And he's like, this people love that. They take it home every day. I'm like, yeah, it's delicious. There's yeah. nothing more comforting like that kind of comfort food. And that's what I love about both Nick and, and Jordan is, yes. first of all, they're both, they're both very high-end chefs. They've worked at great high-end restaurants. They've worked mm -hmm. at the and they've worked at, they've worked at Salt and Jordan's a gold medal plates guy. Like these, these are great chefs yeah. doing great local food. So you'll see everything from a nice homemade burger right on through to ribs. And then if you want, there'll always be something that could be a seared piece of fish or there'll be some seared foie gras, something really upscale and fun yeah. as well. So if your tastes, you know, are, they can be as highfalutin as you want them to be, or as just basic as whatever your craving is, we've got a little something for everybody um, at any given time. And that's, that's the other side of the coin is because, you know, people, people think, oh, you're in Carlton Place, you're in the middle of nowhere. Are you kidding me? Yeah. These guys know their food. It's not like they're, it's not like they're walking in and going, you know, give me just, just want wings. They, they, they're ordering our specials at a crazy rate. When we have specials on, we sell out of them. And those are, are the more expensive plates where we're doing like, you know, we're doing an also buco or we're doing, you know, uh, giant scampies with a parpadel pasta and white mm -hmm. truffle. There's all kinds of crazy stuff that's upscale, you know, what we call big city food. And they're 30 through $34 plates. Uh, they'd be $44, $45 plates in Ottawa, but they're, they're less here. People have no problem because they see no. the value and they'll eat that stuff. And that's, uh, that was part of the whole culture as well. Chris Vashon, our general manager over there, also has brought some great cocktail culture. You know, with the place through Bolton House. I mean, Chris yes. is a well-respected cocktail guy. He's, you know what, these guys like to be called bartenders, but Chris, he's a pretty good mixologist. He's making all kinds of crazy fun stuff that, you know, that whether you're a younger guy and gal or someone who just likes a killer old fashioned or, you know, doing all kinds of infusions on, on his, on his own uh, juices and, and liqueurs and stuff like that. You can go get a great drink as well. You can get a $6 gin tonic, but if you want to go crazy and have a smoked road 29 old fashioned, that's yeah. an $18 drink. You know, it's got two or three ounces of a, of a crazy ass killer smoked bourbon. It's quite the fun thing to do. Yeah. Let us know. I mean, you're, you're really limited by your imagination. Um, and if and there's awesome, really nowhere else in town you can get, you can get cocktails. No, like that. no one wants to. No one wants to do craft cocktails. I think except Chris. <laughs> it's, it's so much. It's hard. It, it's people don't realize. They think, oh my God, you're making so much money. You're not. You're using three times the booze, and you're taking about three times as long to make that drink. Yeah. But the, the customer experience is uh, is 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 fantastic. Listen, if I was a bartender and I just wanted to make money, yeah, throw me in a dive bar serving three dollars shots shots and four dollar paps blue ribbons that's where the money is and that's your <laughs> drink is done in two seconds trust me i know it i do not look down my nose because i love a dive bar i, yeah. I love them. i love them it's 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 so much fun and it's profitable whereas with the craft cocktail side of it the whole thing it takes a long time if you get busy and you've got 50 or 60 people on your patio and one patio is drinking beers and shots and one patio is drinking uh, craft cocktails Service will be much slower on the other side because these drinks take longer to make. People yeah. don't mind waiting, but it's hell on earth for the bartenders. Yeah. You know, there, there's a, when there's seven steps to making a drink as opposed to pour. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a different animal. But I love having that uh, dichotomy between the two restaurants. And, uh, well, and, and it's nice. Like you, you also have some local craft beers on tap and in, and in cans. And then, you know, you go to the patio at Bolton house and, you know, they have that Aperol sweat spritz, uh, drink that is so popular. Aperol and I was so happy Aperol. at Smith and Barrel last week to see the Pim's cup on the menu. So I had a couple yeah. of those. It was so delicious. Brought me back to the UK. And, uh, it's just so nice to see different, drinks every now and then with bolton especially if it's if there's a drink you have in mind that you want that you don't see in the menu if chris is there you just basically have to say look I'm <laughs> and he can make awesome. it, as long as it's not something so obscure from a liqueur that sure. you know that it's it's impossible to get canada is difficult to get booze in you know the lcbo is very very you know, they're just not receptive to change compared to the u.s where corner stores have 
right. you know, more than an average liquor store would in Canada. <laughs> but uh, we like that as well. And we're not going to change that we, by design. Both restaurants, we weren't trying to come to the middle and be the same. Bolton is Bolton and the Grand Hotel is the Grand Hotel. They're different yes. reasons and uh, you know, we want that. We don't want, uh, we don't want to be the same. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And the, they are distinctive for sure. But I think that the commonality there is you get good quality food and great service and gorgeous patios. So you, you've, you've won the lottery on that for sure. As we, as we sort of wrap up, I, ha I have a couple of questions that I'm asking everybody at the end of the interview. So just sort of rapid fire. The first one is, what is your favorite hidden gem in Lanark County? Whether it's a store or a restaurant or a you know, trail somewhere. What's, what's oh. the best part of Lanark County for you? This is going to sound weird, but I don't know the name of it. <laughs> I don't know the name of it. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fishing stream, believe it or not. I, okay. I yeah. love fishing. Yeah. That's, it was West. That's all I know. We were, we were driving with friends. I was a passenger in a car, which I loathe just low being a passenger in a car. And we were talking about fishing and my buddy that was driving is an avid fisherman. And he said, my God, there's this stream over here that if you walk 50 feet up this thing here, uh, the, you can literally catch big brook trout. And I, I grew up fishing trout. And I know down in this part of the world, of course, you know, pickerel is, is everything. Yeah. I love pickerel fishing as well, but I grew up stream fishing as a kid. I still have romantic, weird, you know, thoughts of, of, of fishing. If I see a stream, I can't stop, but look at the thing and think I can catch there. I'm too fat and miserable to walk up a stream anymore to fish. But the reality of it all is I love the whole thought of it. And uh, I literally have a car and took a walk up this thing. And um, you could literally, I, I was literally shaking. I wanted to have a fishing rod in my hand. There were such beautiful little pools, that, you know, the trees were hanging over the stream and wow. stuff like that. We had, uh, Lanark is beautiful. It's beautiful. There's a lot, a lot of our produce comes from Lanark. We buy local. We try to buy as farm to table as we possibly can. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. For me, what sticks out truly was just that geographical thing. One of those things that people don't really realize, you know, they get to Carlton Place or Almont or Perth into the towns and sure there's water everywhere, but you go, you know, 15 minutes further west into the, the highlands, Lanark Highlands, and um, there's so much water everywhere that, like you said, streams and and little ponds and, and lakes that people don't even realize exist. It's just one of those beautiful things that if you, if you go for a little drive or a bike ride, you can, you can see so much. It's, it's, you're right. It is hitting it. That's, I think that's going to get out. It's a great secret still, yeah. you know, one of those best kept things, but uh, enjoy it while you can, because it'll get out just like what happened, you know, with the whole Muskoka thing, you know, 40 years ago, Muskoka That's was, right. now look at it, you know, my friend has a great cottage on Big Gull Lake, only an hour and a half from, you know, and I go there as often as I can, it's not sure. a hard drive, it's good, but that's, it's just beautiful up there, people are so yeah. friendly, it's, and you're starting to see development all over the place now, and, uh, you know, it'll change, it'll change quickly. The second question is, what's the best piece of advice you've ever gotten, whether it was personal or business, and who gave it to you? My old general manager, a guy that I used to work with when I was really, really young in the car business, a guy named Danny. He was my general manager at the time. He was a young guy in the industry. You'd come running into his office and your hair is on fire and you're, you're, you know, you're 20 years old and you're selling cars at the time. You know, back in the day when selling cars was just insane. And I just remember Danny one day just shaking his head at me and saying, dude, Rod, don't bleed until you're cut. Like, just you're acting like you've lost an arm and nothing has happened yet. Let's yeah. wait till something happens before you react to it. So, so I always kind of, I, 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 I like thinking about that because at the end of the day, we tend to react instantly in this day and age, whether it be online or whether it be just everybody's so afraid. You're afraid to say something to somebody, you're afraid to talk. You can't make it, you can't have an opinion because God forbid, what if it's wrong <laughs> and wrong? It might not be wrong, but what if they think it's wrong? That's right. you can't, it's so the whole thing is just take a deep breath and uh, you know don't sweat the small shit. There's yeah. very few things that happen to us in this world outside of death um, that are uh, that are just game ending. You know what I mean? Well, they're even even in business. You're going to see a lot of these restaurateurs that have gone bankrupt through COVID. Bless their hearts. My heart goes out to them and their families because it's terrifying. But I promise you. 
those guys are strong, hardworking guys. They're going to pick it up and they're going to go buy a better restaurant in a better location in a better building and get a better deal than they ever had. And you're going to get to eat their great food again. And this time they're going to actually make some money. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much for joining us, Rod. It's been great chatting with you. I feel like we could do this for hours. (laughs) You know where I am. Just come visit, you know. That's right. After all, Spritzer, we'll talk. That's right. (laughs) Well, thanks for joining us here on Weedle Lanark County, and we will talk to you again soon. My pleasure, Laura. Take care. Take care. Bye. Cheers.